being in the World Trade Center during 9-11. I, I can't take it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the movie Blues. I am DS Lyons. Last time in the show, we checked out the movie Lock-In from 2014, a Christian found footage horror movie that almost made me overdose and die of cringe. Are you going to tell me what you saw in the footage? Let's just say I, I, I now believe there's a correlation between pornography and, and demon activity. So I've gotten a lot of good suggestions from you guys in the meantime on other good religious movies that I should be watching like a good boy. And uh, so I've come upon the movie Journey to Hell, a Tim Che directed movie uh, about a surfing billionaire who uh, spends 50,000 years in hell. And let me tell you, I thought the last movie was bad. Uh, this one really raised the bar in terms of the worst. So join me today as we take a look at this holy disaster. I'm gonna take you on a guided tour, show you the sights, introduce you to all the characters, give you the whole rundown. Um, it's what you deserve, it's what I deserve. It's, I did this to myself. Before then, if you could like and subscribe to this channel, that would be stupendous. My very life and immortal soul depends on it. Get moving! What are you doing? So Journey to Hell begins with a quote that you can only really absorb if you're a speed demon because the editor decides to digitally zoom in on one word of the whole phrase so close that you can't read the rest of it. It's truly amazing to prove that you are completely inept at filmmaking before a single image has actually graced the screen. We're introduced to our setting of sunny opulent California as a cheap ill-fitting rap song plays in the background. I got drip. Thousands on my wrist, I spend thousands on my kicks. But California dreams aren't always paved in gold, an idea that is heavily reinforced by one of the most awkward musical transitions of all time. Fight living the good life. Hollywood's evil. Do you get it? On a sunny Californian day, a group of friends at the beach realize their buddy Shane Badman. <laughs> yeah, Shane Badman never came back in from catching his final wave. No, he said he was catching the last wave with you, Mark. Oh, that's Shane's boy, call 911. Let's go guys, come on, Chase, come on. Turns out Shane has unfortunately drowned in an extremely shallow, waveless part of the ocean. Smash cut to Shane Badman's funeral, where his friends have all gathered in front of the first of a battalion of green screens that make up this movie. I mean, I don't understand why half the shots in this scene are green screened. Like clearly this establishing shot is normal, but then the close-ups of every character seems completely keyed in. I'm sorry, but bro, what the fuck is this tie knot? This is not appropriate for a funeral, my dude. This is something you'd wear to a mob dinner at Giacomo's. And I really, really wanted to dwell on this scene a bit longer. But this is when we get to see the first of many mind-boggling special effects in this movie brought to you by Tim Che Films, as he takes us behind the scenes and underneath a funeral in a way that very few films can. And just like that, three minutes into this opus, and we're in hell. Where am I? And I don't mean Clive Barker or Dante's version of hell. This is like Timu version of hell from the 1997 movie Spawn. But somehow this looks like way worse than that. Our surfer boy Shane comes to the realization that he's in hell with the help of double discount Judah Friedlander. We're in hell, dude! Isn't it obvious? What's your name, man? Dan? I'm gonna call you Steve. Cool. <laughs> What do you do? I'm the world champion. And I get that we're on a small budget here. I get that this is a pretty home-brewed motion picture. But holy shit, you've got multiple double discount Judah Friedlanders in the same frame as double discount Judah Friedlander. This is starting to look like the crowd shots from WWF No Mercy from N64. Then we flash back to six days before hell, and I know this because the film is very specific about it. <sighs> And then we flash back to hell. Like I went back and I timed it. There is 33 seconds of screen time before the switch back to hell, which I guess felt a little longer because of an inserted mandatory YouTube commercial break placed right after the flashback to make it seem longer, I guess. <laughs> the people who work overtime are among the hardest working citizens in our country. I actually think that's why they put that in there 
Anyway, why are we back in hell? This is about as bafflingly short of a flashback that required a giant title crawl as you could ever imagine. And yeah, hopefully this movie is not an hour and a half of disjointed 30 second scene flashbacks that span 50,000 years. And that is foreshadowing. Next up, Shane Badman meets Mao Zedong in hell. Something that he finds just as amusing as I do. Wait, I've seen your picture before. Yes, I am Mao Zedong. So what? This is really crazy. Most bizarre dream ever. Acting. Why does God always send the boneheads here? <laughs> oh man. We cut to five days before hell, where our surfer bro is giving the keynote motivational speech as the head of an equity firm in another nightmarish half green screened auditorium. During this speech, we see some baffling audience B-roll where it seems like no one is even listening to him. Not to brag, but I'm not up here by accident. They chose me. And then he tells his audience to quote, sweep the leg as we decide to zoom in on multiple handicapped people in wheelchairs. Sweep the leg, no mercy. In the next scene, we finally begin to see the cracks in Shane's self-professed good Christian veneer, as his greed seems to leave the Lord high and dry. We have more money than we know what to do with. Why, why don't we use some of it to serve the Lord? I, I can't be serving the Lord right now. Why? I don't know. Deep. Also, oh my God, listen to the Foley sounds for Shane walking with his basketball sneakers on the patio. Except if you look closely, my man is barefoot. Now we cut to a fully green screen church from end to end. Most of these religious movies have ties to churches that they can film in, but this is seriously the only option that these maniacs had. Grace, how sweet the sound. I'm starting to think as we head into the future of filmmaking that people should have to apply for a green screen under the same level of scrutiny that they would apply for a handgun. Next up, we are sadly privy to an orientation session in hell that Shane is attending. And let me tell you, you don't want to interrupt this guy's TED talk. There will be no crying during my orientation. I'm a good person. Rufus! Uh, uh, Listen to him! Uh, Shut your mouth! Now we cut to three days before hell where Shane is giving a dystopian speech about how we should put all petty criminals to death. I, I don't know. I don't know how we got here. I, I don't know. Extend the death penalty to all credit card scammers and thieves of all types, am I right? I honestly cannot believe that I am only 20 minutes into this movie, Jesus Christ. This leads to a scene where bafflingly enough, the writers of this movie are making a case for the dangers of mixing church and state. Ironically, one of the most traditionally Christian and conservative things on the goddamn planet. God is not a politician, Shane. Some of the things you were saying are I'm worried about you. What? Back in hell and Shane Badman is meeting the king of all bad men. And it's the Fuhrer. I know who you are. You're Adolf Hitler. Leave me alone, you American spy. This is utter madness. I don't belong here with guys like you. You get it to get punished. Back on earth two days before hell after Shane and his wife catch a movie. Seriously, that was a terrible movie. Anna. Why? So preachy too, I hate Christian films. The acting was bad, the special effects were horrible, it was low budget, you could tell that all the way. Based. And the cycle continues with Shane Badman on Earth doing every bad thing he can possibly think of while being confused in hell about why he's in hell. It's pretty simple, man. This is utter madness. I don't belong here with guys like you. A few moments later. Why do those punks always have to play that stupid loud music? This planet is just so overpopulated with such worthless little idiots. Why do you have to do that? Can't they play some Mozart or something? Hey! This is utter madness. I don't belong here with guys like you. A few moments later. It's just that this car could have gone to provide medical care for those suffering from COVID in Africa. Africa and India are not my responsibility, Hannah, okay? 
This is utter madness. I don't belong here with guys like you. A few moments later. I'm a model. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you're really beautiful. Thank you. Much like you, I'm getting extreme whiplash from the repetitive structure of this movie. I'm sure that this is what hell is like. Repeating the same cycle of pain over and over again with no end in sight. Yeah, other than my gross greed, publicly calling for the execution of every criminal on earth, low-key cheating on my wife, and constantly skipping church and ignoring prayer, I have no idea how I ended up here. Wow! And at the point at which you think that this movie can't get any more tone deaf or bizarre, Shane Badman meets the Columbine Killers. Do you remember the Columbine Massacre? I remember those losers. You're seriously putting me here with them? What do you want, huh? Where's your other loser friend? Excuse me? You talking to me? Everyone on earth hates you. <laughs> Welcome to the sick piece of trash club. Guess we're family now. <laughs> Loser! Hey, you wanna go? <laughs> Let's go! Next up, Shane Badman is back on Earth being a bad man. Could either of you spare some change? No, but I got some advice for you. Take a shower, clean your filthy clothes, get a job, and stop taking drugs. You know how bad you smell. You reek of shit. Do you know that? <laughs> Again, I want to remind you that this is a movie about a guy in hell who cannot comprehend how or why he got there. Like he thinks there's been some huge mistake. If I was a dictator, the first thing I would do is take cockroaches like that Cretan and exterminate all of them. Brother, you really got a lot of rage in you, man. I'm gonna be praying for you, man. Let's get out of here. Next up, we cut to 20,000 years later. And it seems like everyone else in this movie is as exhausted with this as I am. You've been asking that same stupid question for the last 20,000 years. Is that how long we've been here? And just like that, Shane Badman realizes after 20,000 years that he is kind of a piece of shit. Okay, I admit, I wasn't perfect. I was a little prideful, a little selfish. Oh, really? What about that time you told me? And now we will see Shane Badman's ultimate sin. What about that time you told me? His deepest transgression. What about that time you told me? Hey again, you remember me? Yeah. <laughs> you wanna get a drink? Sure. <laughs> Aren't you married? Yeah, I guess. Well, I don't date married men. Whoa, was I talking about dating? I just had a drink. I never slept with her. I was just looking. You're killing me, Jack. And that's it. That's what apparently we've been building up to, the crescendo of his bad behavior in the normal world. The apotheosis of that terrible behavior is not having sex with a girl. Not doing it. Kind of, kind of talking about it. N not doing it. We are now T minus three hours from hell. And Shane is once again being lectured scripture by one of his coworkers. Seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of God and no, something this. I don't yeah. remember the rest. Doesn't matter. Uh -oh. You know, Michael, I uh, I hate to do this, but I think I'm gonna need to let you go. I really need people on this team that are that are focused. This isn't working. You're not giving me what I need. Imagine being like the head of a major equity firm and just firing one of your best coworkers in broad daylight just because he gave you the Jesus ick. I think I'm gonna need to let you go. And now Badman goes from firing his friend to firing his least favorite coworker of all time, his wife. I just wasted my day serving soup to these worthless unemployed druggies and now this? What is more important than celebrating Christmas Eve at church? I never, never liked it, ever. I hate Christmas. I want a divorce. You're just too... You're too fanatical. Cut to 50,000 years later, AKA Woodstock 99. What's going on over there? Shane is now confronted by a mob of every evil person in hell all at once. It's like the demonic Avengers, and I'm not sure why we're here, but we're doing this. I'm the Zodiac Killer. I'm the best there is. Finally, Shane melts down in hell, and that leads to this epic trailer shot. I you. God, please help me. 
And then Shane wakes up praying and spits a bunch of cum out onto the beach. Shane, come on, Shane. Shane, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Come on, Shane, keep breathing, keep breathing. Oh, thank you. I deserve hell and I will praise you even here. I... It's unbelievable. Dude, you almost drowned, man. Thank God we got here just in time. No way. It was a dream! <gasps> thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. Anna, where, where was your wife? Your ex is still alive? Of course she's alive. Your lawyer just spoke with her. Like, what? what is he talking about? Who is this fucking guy? This guy has not been in the movie for one second up until now, and he knows that Shane Batman's lawyer called about his ex-wife? What? What is this? Who is this man? Of course she's alive. Your lawyer just spoke with her. Blood and righteousness. Unbelievable. This movie is unbelievable. Shane? What are you doing here? I've waited 50,000 years for this moment. And with that romantic comedy style ending, we have reached the end of Journey to Hell. Now, I have to say that after a lifetime of dedicating myself to the art of bad movies and terrible cinema, this is the fucking tar pits of that journey. This is the ore in the center of the magmatic fucking planet Earth, the core of terrible. Uh, I've really never been so bored by a movie in my life. I had to watch this in 20 parts. Lock In, uh, the Christian found footage horror movie we watched last time, that was like a two part experience. This was like in every day I would come home from work and watch seven minutes of this movie and deeply consider quitting YouTube. But I pushed through. I wanted to share this movie with you guys because it made me want to go to hell, which seems like a better option than sitting through an hour and 40 minutes of just endless back and forth, bad cuts, bad music, bad acting, bad messaging, bad man, Shane Badman. And with that, I'm gonna ask that you like and subscribe to this channel. If you wanna see more cringe religious movies, if you wanna see more found footage content, whatever you wanna see from my channel, whatever you want from me, I will do for you uh, as long as you press the engagement buttons below and, and respond uh, in the comments blurbs that we offer as a service to you. Until then, I am DS Lyons of the Movie Blues, wishing you a happy vacation in hell. Whew. Oh, my God.